3-3, that style that Paul Ratcliffe likes. Haley Craig, the new keeper, and she's been outstanding too. I mean, only allowing two goals. Why not, right? Galso Thomas up top, and then Harvey, of course, White's there in the center. But watch out for, of course, number 20 and number 12, Ike. Sensational talent all the way around. That's what Stanford's going to run with 4 3 3. And now we go to Wet Forest as the new keeper, Valentina Amaral, is in the net. She has done her duty, right? And now she is the main keeper. Yeah, she is wearing number one. That's an honor. And everything through this team, defensively and offensively, circle Dempsey Brown in midfield, finally being deployed regularly at her best position, which is the number six. And she is exceedingly important to this Wake Forest side. And an important matchup, we are underway. Stanford and Wake Forest in action here on a Thursday night. The Deeks coming off a big upset against number two, Virginia, on the road. When speaking to Coach Deleuze, he said he was happy the way that his team played on the road against the North Carolina Tar Heels. They only allowed North Carolina three shots, Kyle, which one of those went in the back of the net, but still that's a nice stat to have, just the Coach Deleuze wanted that, but either one point or three points. You shut down the Tar Heels like that? It's pretty, pretty good stout stat for uh, your Wake Forest team. So they open this up. Our head referee is Nick Balser. Excuse me, Balser. Wake Forest in their old goal and their black shorts. Deets will do their best tie to hold possession. Tony Deleuze loves to maintain a strong possessional advantage, but against the number one team in the country, Stanford, that is going to be a tall task. Lake Forest versus Stanford. They never lost, actually, which is, that is uh, quite a feat to have, but it's been a long time since these two tangled as the first meeting back in 2006. Of course, Wake Forest leads that at 2-0-1. Stanford, who they've been stingy in that back line, uh, one of four teams with a perfect, perfect record. All wins, no ties, and no losses. As Swanson outside of her boot pulls it up to Colton. Colton wanted to slide that one on the floor for Emily Murphy. And Colton maybe a little trigger happy there. Could have held on to it for a little longer and had players arriving to help out, but still maintaining possession here. Speaking with Coach Ratcliffe, he said, and his goals against Wake Forest is to strike early, which you'll see the trend that Stanford does that a lot. Starting play, you know, in control. They both, both of these teams like to possess the pelota, but I want to strike first and then kind of command things on the road. Yeah, they've left a couple passes short backwards towards their own goal, so have to be careful con uh, conceding possession and feeding Stanford attacking moves. Pizza Hata right there, number 20, wearing the captain's armband. What a leader that she is. Stanford coaching staff told us just how much she means to this team. 18 goals, 19 assists in her career at Stanford. Here's Swanson taking on the one-on-one -on -one and went into the middle and got up upended by Kohler. Now we will see Keith Teata on the run. Now moving in to the center. Nice little step over, but well played. Deflected off of Keith Tejada. And it'll be Wake Forest ball. Ty, Paul Ratcliffe told us before this game, I, I asked him, I thought it was fascinating, I asked him, what did you guys learn from last season where you, you know, you get unbeaten the entire way through until the national championship game? And he said, we learned that we need to have a hunger in every single game. He said a lot of our, our young team members were just happy to be there. 
in the national championship game and and he said it, we think that negatively affected us and you you watch Andrea Kida how to play and you you understand why she's such an important leader to this team because she has that hunger Damn. every time yeah. that she plays and that feeds through to the rest of the team. He has guided the Cardinal to three national championships, six NCAA finals, 10 conference titles, 10 college cup appearances. And has a squad that is stamped and approved to make another run into the college cup and possibly hoist the coveted cup. As a member of the ACC, that sounds sounds up. <laughs> Good fight, taken away. Stanford will work from the midfield and try to build up. Diagonal ball played right to Kitahara. Kitahara, clever, quick feet, left foot swing across, looking for that far post. That was Montoya who was making the nice run. But look at the creativity, though, by Kitahara. Yeah, and the movement off the ball for this Stanford team is so good. You look at the moment that Kitahara sends the cross in, she had three different options in three different types of shooting zones. You had the cutback to the top corner of the penalty area, you had the cross to the far post, and you had the, the horizontal ball to the, the penalty spot. All three options are exactly what you want when you're sending it across from the side. Scythe, who is an attacker but also plays defense, has been pulled back to play outside back position. And Tony, I spoke to Tony last night. He said he really likes that move and it's really paid off. Yeah, yeah I add another attacker to get involved. That's but play defense because she's very quick too. And, and a lot of the times, you know, an underdog in a team going up against a, a strong opponent, you're, the thinking can be like, where well, we're going to have to be solid defensively, right? But when you put a, a player who's a natural winger at fullback, the idea is to pin the opponent back. So what, in essence, they're doing is playing defense against a player like Kitahara with offense. And that's what they're going to look to do today. That was good defense by Dempsey Brown, shutting down that angle against Kohler uh, there. It does bring up a corner kick for Stanford. The short option will be Montoya. He put in by Ike. And Ike can serve the ball well. Chavoshi heading that out of danger. And Banks running on. Thought there may have been a deflection off a of hand, but play on. And that is what we do. Up ahead using Murphy. Murphy into space. Going one on one with Pagador. Did have an option on the opposite side. Very good tackle. You see why this Stanford team is so solid defensively. Kelly Pagador there, senior, wearing the captain's armband. You get two of those, and she's wearing it alongside Kitahara. That was a necessary tackle in transition because Murphy, a bit of a heavy touch. She was clean through on goal if she got by. Chavo, she read that a little wrong, but look at that recovery to get right in front of Kitahara. Ball taken away by Montoya. Now, if you remember that Santa Clara game, that theft right there, moving towards their attacking third, created the only goal. Again, the press by Stanford suffocating. You can see on display here. Javoshi also had a brilliant set piece against Virginia. She uses the switch there, does not quite work. A through ball that is threaded, and there's a shot and immediately blocked by Amaro. What a big, big clutch save to keep Wake Forest and Stanford nil-nil. 
just how quick they can attack and quick they can strike. And now she saves a corner as well. Really good effort. I thought the flag may go up on that delivery because to me, live, it looked offside, but they let him play on, and what a stop by Amaral. Finish needed to be a little further away from the goalkeeper, but Amaral had a lot of work to do to keep that one out. Last two starts against Carolina and UVA now starting against Stanford. How about that for three starts? Yeah, welcome to the yeah. ACC, right? <laughs> She's been ready. And she has gladly taken over also. They've been on the U.S. women's national team. Some capacity. This is well played, Swanson. Now connecting with Scythe. Scythe will get involved in the attack and sends the center ball for Murphy. Murphy had trouble settling it down. And just like Dempsey Brown tried to use the outside of her foot, taken away immediately by Kohler. Kohler now sprays it out to the left. Kitahara once again putting her fingerprints all over this match. And they've just played a little over 10 minutes. Harvey. Here's the switch. Montoya is on it. Trying to turn there right at the byline. Great defense by Johnson. Christine Johnson shutting down the angle. Montoya, another star in the making at Stanford. Her father was an MLS star. Now coaching the Professional Women's Soccer League. Played at Santa Clara, but actually played majority of his college career it's NC State now this is kind of opened up early in this one Stanford with the best look but Wake Forest not shying away they trust themselves they trust their game Kyle and they feel as if they can add on to those three goals that they put in against UVA well, what's interesting too, Ty, is that they're not playing on the counter. They are looking to possess the ball and build from the back. And that is a commitment by Coach Deleuze to playing the way that they want to play regardless of who's opposite them on the field. You know, you, you've got the number one team in the country coming into Spry Stadium. It is tempting to try and play on the counter and, and get married to pinging long balls forward. They are going to stick to what they do best. Look at that pink, Colton. Colton thought about it, pulled it right back to Hanks. Hanks on the left side. Scanning. Put an in swinger here. Scythe, Scythe, Scythe. So dangerous that Murphy just tried to get up in the air. I think, I think she thought for just a half a second about biking that. And said, mm, no, I better not. Yeah, landing is tough. Well, <laughs> also, she had a defender <laughs> right did, on yes. her, and that can be really dangerous if you swing your foot at it like that, and you can kick someone in the face. Even if you don't, you can get a foul or a yellow card or whatever. So the right decision there. The ball wasn't really placed well, and she had a defender too close to her. Yeah, I think she, she thought three, about it. She, she had three different options she was thinking of, and just kind of at the last minute, that ball fell to the pitch. One shot. That was by Stanford and our player to watch, Key Tejada, Andrea. I remember that name. Dempsey Brown, good challenge right on the back of Kohler. And now Emery will work it back to Haley Craig. Haley Craig, she comes in, she spent her time, had a couple starts, appearances last season, but now this is her team. Remember the goalkeeper for last year's team that went to the College Cup. She transferred to UCLA. And that's where she's starring for the Bruins. Brian Campbell. That paved the way for Haley Craig. This paves the way for Keita Hata. Kitahara swerving in and out between two De Wake Forest defenders. And that is deflected last touch by the Cardinals. Ty, for a player who's a natural winger, Sierra Scythe has defended extremely well. And how about the credit that Coach Deleuze gets to 
moving her into that position and saying, of course, we want you to push forward and pin the opponent's winger back in their own half, but we're going to need you to defend, <laughs> right? Well, well, Wake Forest women's soccer team, that program, good big chunk of the years of women's soccer in the hardware as well as the banners by that man, Tony Deleuze, who came in to the 97 and 97 season. You talk about Wake Forest women's soccer. That's head coach Tony Deleuze. I spoke with him yesterday. And you could tell right from the first word I spoke to him and his his answer. He is, they have a, a chip on the shoulder. They feel, and he was adamant. He said, you know, we had we, three losses last year. We didn't even get invited to the dance. He said, I, I know the ties. He wanted to get rid of the ties, and he's put that as uh, their number one target this year. But, and that's why they've, <laughs> they've got a good slate of, of games. But, you know, they are mad. They feel like they deserve to be in the NCAA tournament last year. They did not. And they've used that motivation into 2024 with a very seasoned veteran team along with some young talent. Kitsahara. But yeah, just three losses. You'd think in the ACC, we talk about how the, it's you know, such a big conference. And if I told you a team only has Three losses on the year. Do, do they make the tournament? What would you say? Yeah, yeah, and especially in such a juggernaut of a conference and a you know, slate of games. Colton slides it up ahead. Here's Murphy. Murphy looking for some options, trying to buy some time. Also got a little elbow shoved by Emery just to let Emily Murphy know she's there. Murphy trying to tow that byline, was working for that Meg, didn't work. She gets it back. And this is out of bounds. In is it a throw in or a kick or a corner kick? Well, she was trying to win that corner the first time around, and it was well defended. Yeah, it's a throw in. Real close to that <laughs> corner flag. How about that throw by yeah. Sierra Sight? Just pinging it straight into the ground so that the ball dies. Look at this delivery that was headed to fall right down in front of Swanson. Now it's taken away, and here comes the Cardinal working their numbers up. We've gone end to end. Now it's his Stanford's turn. 1-0 scoreline against Santa Clara in their last match on the road. This is a well-placed ball. Montoya was ready to pounce on, but kudos to Amaral, who comes out and makes the grab. 27 and a half remaining in the first, 45. Also talking to Coach Deleuze, he said that uh, Kai Hanks was pleading to him, hey, I just need a little bit of extra practice before we go to Virginia. So he said, all right, we'll go out there. So went out to the practice field. She worked on finishing, and apparently it worked well. She had a brace in the first half. Stanford trucking along. I think that was a shot, Ty. Just scuffed it a little bit. They have their tails up looking to make something happen. Kohler, a freshman from Woodside, California. She has scored in two of her first eight collegiate matches. Now Wake Forest, here comes the wave for the home side. Swanson in, dis Swanson in the space. Towing. Oh, falling down with a left hand, left foot shot that almost found that far netting. It was blocked right in the last second. Scythe working. Scythe, California native as well. And now she'll have to hurry and retreat back. Chavoshi. Great 
attack. Boom. Boom shot. Chavoshi's also signaling to the side judge that a little bit of a arm action as the fans were kind of yelling too. Just looked like a good 50-50. It's a good contest to watch though. Yes, it is. Both teams have that hunger we spoke about earlier, Ty. Both teams really up for this game. Picked away, Swanson running out of space. We'll see that out of bounds. It'll be a throw in here in the attacking third for Pagador. It's a hot up. Sitting right there in the pocket, waiting for that ball to be played. Decided to play the support. Now they'll try the long ball. This time, Kitahara is wide open, and Scythe will now come in to play the 1v1. Just off the bottom cleat, it's cleared. Hanks is on her way. Trying to buy some time for her teammates to get up. Dempsey Brown and Swanson now moves on the width of this pitch. Watch Wake Forest, they're going to use every bit of the pitch here at Spry. Coach Toulouse stressed that in training. Here's Dempsey Brown trying to have some kind of service ball. And uh, I was a little iffy on that to stop there by Craig. She kind of ran into her own teammate. Swanson, slow to get up. Oh, this isn't good. You've got two Wake Forest players who are down. You've got Sierra Scythe, who may be cramping a little bit as Valentina Amaral comes over to help her out. And then also up front, as you mentioned, slow to get up. Wake Forest players going over to the touchline to get some water. Referee wants them to keep going. Not an official water break. Right. Beautiful day today. Gorgeous. It's been gorgeous here in North Carolina for the last two weeks almost. Except for, I mean, when that rain came, there was yeah. a little bit of a, a little uh, damp, but then you could kind of look at this radar and watch this move out and then sure enough that sun came up there's a beautiful look at the North Carolina fall sky under the lights of the beautiful grounds Spry Stadium Lake Forest on a mission after turning heads by beating Virginia number two in the country on the road 3-0 said you know, the mission's not done yet they hope to knock off the number one team first time ever in history they get that chance tonight against the runners up last season the Stanford Cardinal Shavoshi great step by Shavoshi to win the ball back Look at the she's surge. got help the surge of Chavoshi, what a cutback. Left foot swinging across. Here's Hanks. Hanks having to improvise. Wins it back, and here's Murphy. Tight, tight spaces, and... Back and forth, now possession back. Emily Morris, who's on it. Only one shot between both of these clubs. A huge save by Amaral. A well-played ball by Chavoshi. Here's Hanks, Telwick, right foot. May have just lifted up that torso a little bit. But uh, Hanks getting involved, and of course Stanford has circled her number. Yeah, and I think I think the Deeks are getting just a little trigger happy, both with the shots and with the crosses. It's 
they're doing an excellent job of keeping Stanford hemmed in and then progressing quickly forward into the attacking third. But once they get into the attacking third, moving a little quick and not playing safe. When you start pummeling the box with crosses, you give the ball away a lot. So they're filtering everything out wide. And then instead of filtering it back into the middle where there are options, they're just booting crosses into the box or taking shots from long distance. So if the Deeks want to make something happen here, they have to be composed in the final third. That's another thing that Coach Deleuze stressed is he wants consistency of this team each game, each match, and especially in that attack. Hit the wide spots, hit the 7 and 11, and then work one in. Stanford also good at hitting the 7 and 11 and then sending the delivery into the box. Free kick for the Cardinal. A lofted square pass. A little too much time. I'll play it back to Craig. Oddly enough, the last time Wake Forest took on a number one team was, or here at Spry was against UVA back in 2019. And, and that was, the result was a tie, which Coach Deleuze does not like. But even with the number one team, they got the number one team now as Murphy looking to pounce and looking to fire one into the net. It's deflected good defense. That's why the Stanford team has only given up two goals so far. Yeah, unfortunately, the window wasn't there for that shot, Ty. That was a beautifully played ball through the legs right to Emily Murphy. And she's got the defender who marshaled her wide. Shot was not there. I'll bring this one back in free kick. Close to the ACC logo. A tackle that was considered reckless. That was Emily Morris. Uh, you know how good this team is with crosses and then putting the ball inside the mixer. There's another good spot for it. Ike, who is, well, one of many dangerous weapons on this team, is behind it. What she can do with the ball. Midfielder now playing the center back position. Good spin. That almost worked brilliantly. It was hung up in the air, a lot of spin, allowing the run on by Keita Hata. And a chance to pick it out of the air on a volley. Just lifted it a little over the ball. I wonder if well played. Yeah, it was, it was brilliant. I wonder if she might have been leaning offside as well on that delivery. I'm, I'm sure they would have checked to make sure had the ball gone in the net. But that was a clear-cut chance on goal. I love the backspin that uh, I keep put on that. You have someone like that to come up and place a ball. That is, that's just, that's, that's a luxury to have. And speaking of luxuries, how about Wake Forest having a player like Nikki Small coming off the bench yeah. into this game? Well, Coach Deleuze has said what makes this team unique from other teams is the depth, but not just depth, it's the experience in the depth. Murphy trying to turn and move down that touch line. I like Amia, who is, has an injury, which is another fantastic weapon that could have been here. Hopefully she'll get back to being 100%. And this team's still very deep. Nikki Small was brilliant against Virginia. She is feisty, and she wants the ball. That's the type of player you want. You want someone who wants the ball, and she'll spread out wide. Is in the expansive 
strategy. How about that tackle? Lost the ball. Just got her pocket picked, comes in and makes an excellent tackle. On the touch line. With also being used by Stanford. And a one hopper easily stops by Amaro. allowing Stanford the back line to kind of move up now they'll try to pull in the press spits out to Dempsey Brown Stanford doing a fantastic job too of creating these really tight spaces for the force trying to find their way out of it Wama has come in. This outside the left position, left back position. Freshman from San Diego, California. Number three recruiting class. A recruiting class for head coach Radcliffe. That's the norm. From the Cardinal. Hanks. Colton hand up. So is small. Hanks continues with it. Surging past defenders. Square pass, Colt. Rockets a shot. It's upper feet, top shelf. Are you kidding me, Kyle Moore? Colt has made it one nil. What a goal! All day to shoot at the top of the penalty area. As soon as she received the ball, you knew she was going to go for goal because she had nobody within five yards of her. Just a, an uncharacteristic defensive lapse for Stanford, and she made the most of it. Top corner with this effort with the right foot. Just a sizzler into the back of the net. And you couldn't place it anywhere. That is what you call upper feet and point accuracy. And Cole now has three goals to her name to go along with three assists. Wake Forest with a early 1-0 lead. With about 15 minutes to go in the first half. The aggressors have come through with a Golazo as Colton with a stunning, stunning upper V shot. Which is about as impossible to stop. Iswick Forest a 1 0 lead. And the number one team on the ropes. Chavoshi. Here comes Murphy. Murphy. See what kind of magic she can do at the byline. It is all of the defender. It goes out of bounds. It will be a corner. That was off of Embry. And such a skill, an underrated skill for a forward is to recognize when you've got no help and you're hemmed in on the far end line to win a corner. You've got one on two, she had two defenders right in her face, very little room to operate. She could have pulled it back and tried to recycle possession. Instead, she says, I'm just going to bang it off the defender's foot and win a corner, which is the right move. I'm still stunned by that dart in the upper feet by Colton. Colton will deliver the corner. Out swinger. Answell trying to get involved. Colton trying to add an assist to her name tonight. Small. Small with a quick turn, but a lot of traffic. Very congested. And the Deeks are buzzing all over the pitch. After that goal, it's they've been off and running too. They want more. 
Stanford trusting in their game. Just the third goal Stanford has allowed this season. And to be honest, the, that is an impossible stop on a shot that uh, was sniped by Colton. You could kind of see that develop too, Kyle, just by, and maybe you could say, Hanks, add a little extra touches, but that allowed Wake Forest to get their numbers down and then and allowed a square pass right there in front of the 18. Just shocking to see the amount of space. Absolutely. It was unlike this Stanford defense to allow a player to just be so unmarked in such a dangerous position. Small. Small maneuver in between three defenders. Deflected goes out of bounds. And we've got some substitutions coming in for both squads. Here in the game for Wake Forest, number 16, Alex Wood. Number 43, Abby Colton. The Wood coming in. And the other Colton coming in. And number 28, Smith. Abby Colton in for Emily Morris. Christine Johnson. Look at Hanks. She invited that double team. It was taken away. She was expecting some room on that touch line. Now Stanford moving in. Good cross taken away by Chafoshi. On a half volley clearance that didn't quite go the way she had planned, but at least it keeps Stanford out of the box. Now they'll work back into the box. Feisty defense on this Wake Forest team that comes into 2024 with a big chip on their shoulder. Making headlines with a 3-0 victory over Virginia, number two Virginia, on Sunday afternoon. And now, turning heads, raising eyebrows with a 1-0 lead over number one Stanford. Though, as you mentioned, Kyle, they do not lose very often. Chavoshi. That's just smart play, too, by Small. Small knows the advantage there with the height. Sees where that ball is played. Says, OK, if there's going to be the ball won by Stanford right, most likely that will go out of bounds. And we are throwing anyway. Colt slides this one up ahead to Small. Small into the box. Still fighting for it. It's amazing what she can do with this fight. Hanks trying to keep it within her reach in the big desperation clearance that Ansbrough will usher back to Amaro. Ty, since that goal, the Deeks have really controlled this game. They haven't produced a ton of attacking moves that have been dangerous, but they are the ones with the impetus right now. If you are, you know, keeping score on who's more likely to score the next goal, it's the Deeks right now. Stanford looks a little shell-shocked. How many XG? <laughs> Well, you need shots for that, right? Well, five shots for Wake Forest and three for Stanford. And the degree of difficulty by Colton to spear one in the upper V to make it 1-0. I think that shot alone. <laughs> would ignite uh, your team, add a little bit of uh, adrenaline, too. Dempsey Brown, a team that was kind of absent in the conversation, Kyle. But if you look at the makeup of this team, there's a lot of experience and a lot of talent for them to kind of be overlooked. And they can move up to 13th in the country 
after that big win against Virginia. Dempsey Brown a little late on that challenge. It'll be a free kick for the Cardinal. Santa Clara did a good job of keeping down the attack by Stanford. But what paid off, of course, was the intervention and then the theft, and then how quickly Stanford can get up the pitch. I mean, in a hurry. Which is another one of those things that uh, Coach Deleuze said. He circled in our conversation last night. Under seven and a half to go. In the first half, Wake Forest leading 1-0. Stanford trying to level it up. Scythe. Phenomenal defending. Scythe on tight spaces was able to come away with the ball and then hit it off of the defender. Take a look last year about the RPI, which was the big factor of why Wake Forest did not make it to the dance. Now you look at the RPI now, 10th. Which is even higher than their ranking. Yep. And you know, you saw that jump. Johnson. I'll tell you what, the Smith, Logan Smith has been just up and down the pitch all over the place, creating some havoc for Stanford. Jumping off the bench, you can hear come, here comes the press by Logan Smith. You gotta love a player that may not get the playing time, extended playing time, but when she is on the pitch, she's going all uh, all out, leaving it all on the pitch. You love high energy, high work rate players like that, especially when it comes to your substitutes. That's why Tony Deleuze likes having Nikki Small coming off the yeah. bench right now because she's a similar player. I would never expect Nikki Small to come off the bench. No. She is Hanks, the starter, moving around. Hanks with a brace on Sunday, looking for one here on Thursday night. And did have a good look, just scuffed it a little bit. Just the slightest bit heavy on her touch going into the defense. Brilliant, mazy run. That is what she is at her best, is 1v1 dribbling. Remember the early matches we saw Hanks with Emily Murphy, and it was kind of just a little bit off the connection and the chemistry? Well, after watching that first goal against Virginia, uh, things have been pretty nice between the two. Now, Emily Murphy, of course, not on the pitch right now. Number of tackles for Zara Shiboshi today. Shiboshi spits it up outside of her boot to Small. Small flag stays down and Small looking for a target. Only two in the box. Colton to her sister. Is Colton already with a goal? She can hit it from there. She can hit it again. And it's very, very much pace on it that Craig could not handle it. Yeah, she was looking to deliver another heat seeker to the top corner. Just didn't get the placement on that right, but it certainly had the power. Emily Colton coming over from UNC to play with her sister, Abby. Those two talk about chemistry. Let's take a look. Same, same kind of pace, just right at the direction of the keeper, Haley Craig. I say keep going, though. With if she's around that 18, she has a green light, in my opinion. Kyle? Yeah, no question about it. I think there's a couple players on this team that you could say that about. Yeah. He's over the top, trying to get behind the defense. Colton running on, as well as Wood. Hanks late arriving, but almost worked out. Look at the challenge by Christine Johnson. Hanks. Towing, takes a shot with a right foot, trying to hit the same upper V on that right post. Just sprays it a little wide. Second team all ACC, she was spectacular to watch. She just kind of 
had the had the little plague of not being able to score, and then finally she was able to come through. And she is a she is a huge threat. I mean, anytime she can get in the box, she's a threat. Right well, now. you see the effect that she has on defenders. She just touches the ball one touch onto her right foot and almost puts a defender on their rear end. Chiboshi. That uh, slid out of the way by Klinger. Klinger does not agree with the call. Two and a half to go in the first 45. Wake Forest with a 1-0 lead and out shooting Stanford so far 8-4. to four. Emily Colton in the 31st minute with a dart into the upper 90. Some frustration foul. Surprised we didn't see a card come out, but Small is being feisty, taking that away. And I mean, you kind of understand. <laughs> Staying clingler there. Just like, she's, all, she's all over the place. Too quick, just kind of put the foot out. A little late and trip up. I do have to give the uh, referee credit, not pulling out the cards rapidly. Yeah, not quite yet. I think might be close if this continues, but it was just getting a little chippy down there on the right flank, so ref can use the threat of a card almost as effectively as the card itself. Right, right. Craig, very risky. Taken away, not the spot you want it to be taken away if you're Stanford. 105 remaining in the first half. The Deacons lead 1-0. Do they have one more trip into their final third? Left in them. Sight. Last touch by Samantha Williams there. Twenty-seven seconds. Stanford trying to put together something a little heavy on that touch. And running on was clear. And all that's just a that's just a veteran playing veteran style of goalkeeper. Falling on it. Watching the clock tick down to end the first half. And gladly taking a 1 0 advantage over number one, the Stanford Cardinal. But right now, they find themselves on a long trip across country from California to North Carolina and trailing 1 0 as we start the second 45. And Sproul. You can see the leadership and the poise once she's on the ball. Huge piece to have a sturdy center back. So I think with, especially with Chavoshi too. I mean, those two together. Murphy intervening, almost had it. Makawa, if you're Stanford, what do you try to do here to get back to level terms? They have to find the control that they enjoyed through the first 15 minutes of this game. It was, it was there for them. There were a couple decent chances on net, nothing that really explodes off the page, but a, a few good opportunities, and it all kind of faded. Wake Forest has not been blinded by the bright lights of playing the number one team in the country. They have continued to look to play their own game, building from the back, playing from outside in. Stanford has to reestablish the control that they had in the early portion of this game while the Deeks were starting to figure things out. Yeah, I mean, we saw the player to watch, Kitahata, who was 
getting involved, getting into the 18, creating a lot of problems. Almost had a sitter there on that volley that she just missed. But after that, Wake Forest adapted quickly. They kind of shut her down, or definitely quieted her for the rest of the first half. And, and she came off at one point, yep, and you could, you could see Stanford lose a little bit of edge. Christine Johnson from Iceland, who's been on that back line for a good while now for Coach Deleuze. Eight shots for the Demon Deacons, just four for Stanford. Point blank. It was 1v1 between Andrea Kitahata and Amaral. And what a huge stop. If you look now, how big that stop was. Because an early strike like that for Stanford. I don't I think you'll see the confidence which you see right now by this Wake Forest team and how they are just, just a little extra wind in their sail. Completely agree. Stanford scores that. You, you feel like you're climbing Mount Everest at that point, even though it's just one goal. I think that's also why Wake Forest knows how very fragile that one they'll lead and how important it is to keep the Cardinal from finding that equalizer. You have to keep that discipline and that shape in that back line. And as Coach Lou said, one of part of the keys is got to protect the ball in possession. In this space, Morris is slowly arriving, but timing it just right to sit there right at the 18, but deflected out of bounds to be a court for the Demon Deacons. Colton into plenty of space over there. Doing the honors for Wake, number three, Emily Colton. She just has a way to, to find space, create space, find these pockets, and they're like, why is she so wide open? Off-ball movement right. is such an underrated part of this Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Totally agree, 100%. Everybody likes to dazzle on the ball, step overs, dribbling, that kind of thing, passing. Six targets. Here's a corner. Antwerp getting, trying to put her head in there, but taken right out of the air by Haley Craig. Good goalkeeping by Haley Craig. I think she wanted a foul on that, too. I think you're right. But she managed to claim the ball, and nothing terribly dangerous, so. Stanford slate coming to this match is, is pretty daunting, too. I mean, taking on USC, I know they're not a ranked opponent, but they're always a very formidable program for soccer. And then taking on Santa Clara on, on the road, and then flying across country to Winston-Salem. And then they'll head to NC State. ACC opener too. It's Wake Forest's home opener for the ACC. Now welcome to the, the ACC, ACC for Stanford, right? Hey, this is what this conference brings. You're going to get punched in the mouth a few times. That's just how it works. But Paul Ratcliffe has led this Stanford program through thick and thin, and that is not about to stop. This actually the series goes back to 1997. Oh, wow. uh, Force player on the pitch. That was a crunching tackle. The ref said that the ball was won. Montoya surging towards the final third. Play the square ball. Now they'll work towards the left channel.
Harrison. Here's Montoya. Climbing it with no problems is Shivoshi. Stanford now working towards the midfield, now moving into their attacking third. Dempsey Brown. Here's a nice play, ball, good turn, and immediately wiped away by Christine Johnson. But once again, Stanford hunting. Yeah, it's just, it's not happening for Stanford right now like it was earlier in the game. Early in the game, they had Wake Forest from about the 10th minute to the 20th minute, 23rd minute, that kind of area of the game. They had Wake Forest pinned back pretty deep. The Deeks were not uh, possessing the ball well, not being able to build forward terribly expertly, and they were they were pinned in their own half. The Cardinal just had not been able to do that since. The Deeks have managed to relieve the pressure every time it begins to build. A free kick for Wake Forest. Some frustrations boiling over for Stanford. Plenty of soccer to be played, though. Shavoshi. With no contact, fell down, and now Stanford want to take advantage of it. did drizzle a little earlier today, or depending on where in Winston-Salem you were, rain a bit, so maybe the field has a little bit of slickness to it. Stanford now working again. They've been really moving into this attacking third, searching for an equalizer, and that was hooked a little too over the ball. Look out, came a man behind the, the goal. Right there in the line of fire. Boots of his one who took the attempt. Does have some distance, but well off the target. Morris, good hesitation there. Took a little extra touch there, which was brilliant to play it to Colt. Flicking it up is Murphy immediately surrounding Swanson there and the threat is no more. Montoya, Johnson now jockeying. Montoya thought about it with a left foot. This is played well and then sent over sky high. And just about maybe 16 yards out. Maybe. That is a great opportunity. A great opportunity. She had tons of space to shoot and just didn't manage to put it anywhere close. The missed chances for Stanford really starting to rack up. I don't know what she was shooting at, but the top left corner was wide open. Kitsuhara about 17 yards out. You don't see that very often from a talented player like her. Now five goals, three assists so far this season. Looking for her sixth and her 19th of her career. And Rob moving all the way up past the midway line. Murphy going to get a little clever, hoping that Morris will make that run. She stayed back. Doesn't matter when Forrest gets possession back. Morris now in her pocket. Johnson points right to the ground, and that's where she'll get it. As Hanks looking. Plenty of options there on the right side. Murphy tried to thread it. Take it away. Stanford, a defense not to mess with. Murphy tried to possibly been a probing pass to Hanks. She'll probably look at the tape and see those options to the right, but she's the main reason that, uh, one of the main reasons that Wake Forest is up 1-0. Right in the clutches of Amaral.
very risky. Thomas almost <laughs> was surprised that Wake Forest decided to do that play at short. It was immediately intervening. I got to give credit to Amaral keeping her poise. Most goalies would kind of freak out. Yeah. That is uh, that is a that is a nervy moment for a goalkeeper that probably isn't used to playing on the ball a ton. I can see she also wanted to reach down. Yeah. Can't pick that, that, that ball was up. the old rule. Thank goodness that's that changed. Yeah, that was that was really the ECC fans will appreciate this. That was really the moment where, like in basketball, where they they had that four corners offense that just killed the clock, and then they brought the shot clock in and it made the game more exciting. The the back pass rule really kept teams from time wasting yep. in an in an unwinnable way. Passing the ball back to their goalkeeper to be able to pick it up was such a weapon in the time wasting department. There was a big protest about it too when it first was initiated by the EPL coaches. But uh, that didn't last long. Uh, Wake Forest working. Swanson, Swanson. Colton. Deflected. Rebounded. Oh, pinned it twice off the post. The bar and then the left post. Murphy. The double <laughs> she had one in for Emily Murphy. And that is so unlucky. She was right there to pounce on the save rebound. Falls from a very tight angle. Oh, my God. It's the crossbar and the post. Look how that ball died, too, after it hit the bar, then the left post. It just went straight down. And Murphy, just with eyes the size of golf balls, went, why did that, or how did that not go in? Cody Parkey would be proud. <laughs> Murphy thought uh, the score line was going to be 2 0 in favor of, his, of her Demon Deacons. So. She might get another chance here. Well played by the goalkeeper, Haley Craig, coming out to grab it. That, I mean, that would have been such a, uh, an incredible goal because she's from such a tight angle on the shot. Great layoff pass there. Good left-footed hit. Goalkeeper makes the save. And look how tight this angle is. There's not a window to shoot at. Unbelievable. She puts that. I mean, it's not officially on target, but for all intents and purposes, on target. And it... It's two parts of the woodwork and comes out. Very rare you see that. Unreal. And that is a huge moment in this game because Wake Forest going 2-0 up with a half hour left, you would start to see Stanford hit the panic button. Game very much still in the balance. And we saw one of those uh, near misses, if you will, with that point blank range shot. 1v1 with Amaral and the all-star superstar Kitahata. Then here in the second half, from that same goal, you know, Emily Murphy uh, hit uh, the bar in the post and no goal. Could that result well for Stanford? Murphy has something else to set. Sliding it for Hanks and Hanks falling on the ground just with a short window. Couldn't get a touch on it. The idea was the right idea. It just, that defense coming in and collapsing on Hanks. Another near miss. And Kyle, we're sitting with the Demon Deacons with 11 shots. Stanford with six. Yeah, certainly not what you would have expected coming into this game. Said it early in the match that Wake Forest will try to play their possession style, but against the number one team in the country, it's going to be difficult. They have managed to do an exceptional job of that and create chances like this. Murphy, the cross in front of the net, just out of reach. Some subs coming in as Joel Jung has come in. Thomas has come out. Klinger back in. And Samantha Williams, who played in the first half, has come in. Alex Wood has replaced Hanks. In the, end of the 18, deflected and just away from 
the goal. Man, the, the urgency and just the will by this Diva Deacon team is unreal. And Emily Murphy is cooking the Stanford defense over the last five to ten minutes. She is on a mission right now to make something happen. Shaded to the right side of the goal in a hybrid winger striker role. She has been a menace on the break. Reaching 50-50 balls first, pouncing on rebounds. Just a will to make things happen. Out swinger. Colt Swanson getting involved. Deflected out of bounds, it will be another corner. Let's do it again for Red Forest. As they all say. Stanford with their backs against the wall. Holding on to that 1 0 deficit. As the Deacons continue to push and push and surge and surge. Can they come up with. Goal number two here on the corner kick. Murphy backing up, hoping that would play right down to her feet. She'll have to come out and get it. Murphy got tripped up. Play on, the referee says. Coach Deleuze looking on. He's never beaten the number one team in the country. He finds himself 26 minutes and some change and finally accomplishing that feat. Long way to go, though, for that. Colton. I should like to bring up the haunting of the 2019 match where Virginia found an equalizer in the 90th minute. The celebration was just about to start. And the UVA came quickly up the pitch and found the other a goal to make a level. Two late goals are now too. Sorry. Yeah. Deach just have to maintain their composure here. Stanford, though, needs to get a foothold in this game. They just have not looked dangerous in the second half. Chavoshi, that was risky. Still came out with it. Stanford now building again. And the Deacons took the lead in that last match, 2019, against number one UVA on PK. In the 87th minute took about. A stalemate all the way to the 87th minute, and then two goals within two minutes. It's a funny sport, Ty. Thin margins and luck also play a big part of it. And every, every player and manager will tell you the same thing. They don't like to admit it, yep. but they know they have to because you're absolutely right. Stanford with a good theft here, possession back. They'll work to get some numbers. But Wake Forest has done a fantastic job of getting their numbers back. And Stanford saw their Kohler kind of sneaking away and then immediately pressing. That's just smart soccer IQ. Chiboshi. Play this in the center circle with the challenge. Bring that back and then Murphy. She was offside actually coming back for the ball. Thank you. I thought you had a question. <laughs> now Murphy now into a pocket. 1v3, now 2v3. Moving to the left is Wood. Oh, that ball intended maybe for Wood. Not quite. 
Yeah, that was a that was a great delivery. The window was there. I don't think Wood saw it coming. She was hanging back, trying to maybe position herself for a rebound if the shot was taken. But if she had continued, it would have been a great chance on goal. Deeks now going to move those center backs to the midway line and now work. Dempsey, who's played on that back line, now playing defensive center mid, more of her, again, as you said, Kyle, earlier, her comfortable position. It's kind of changed this club, too. I mean, they have really worked well with Dempsey bouncing in that defensive center mid position. Now we'll get a card for the first time. That's something more is going to be maybe a tactical foul, maybe a yep. three foul, but the frustration foul. But it's the floor. The, that was, that was uh, a blatant tactical foul grabbing the shirt here. She knew she'd been beat, didn't want to concede a, a counterattack, and the shirt tuck absorbs the yellow card. Joel Junk, that was nice report there. Of course, we'll go into the book. And the set piece played by the dangerous Jasmine Ike. This might be a card too. No. So it was Pacador who tangles up, but does not go in the book. Bit surprising to see. Thought that was of similar nature, stopping a counterattack. And still, the referee has done a fantastic job of keeping things steady. Yeah, you know, it hasn't been a terribly chippy game, which is good to see. Both teams trying to play enjoyable soccer. They're trying to score goals. There's attacking intent. The fouls have been, or the, excuse me, the tackling has been good. There's been a lack of fouls in that tackling. You know, and, and when there are physical moments like this, it's an attempt to win the ball, not play physically. Morris goes down there, no card. And the fans wanted it. There's some substitutions, a little line change for both of these clubs. Let's take a look at the first six matches for Wake Forest. And look at that. <laughs> that isn't the error on the computer. That's number 10, number 2, number 1. You get California, now you got to go on the road to Syracuse. Oh, come back for an October 3rd date with the national champions. <laughs> Life in the ACC does not make things easy. And now you've added a couple of premier programs that are also long road trips and it is now wake of course may have gotten knocked for you know, some of the teams that they play at the beginning of the year but look if you got, if you got a huge slate like that coming up i mean do you blame them absolutely not <laughs> uh, and you look at at the wake men's team right now they had a brutal start to the season schedule wise played a ton of really quality opponents and now i have to play acc opposition, which in the men's side of things, it's just as difficult. Yep. So there, you've got to have room to breathe somewhere. There's an attempt that Jaws spits out left of the post. That was a good look. Great idea to keep it on the deck. Yeah, a, a bit of a heavy touch by Dempsey Brown, but I'll tell you what, Ty, the Deeks will take that shot every time. Klinger took that shot bit deep ton of time for Valentina Amaral to cover the goal and on a turnover like that when there's the opportunity to create a really dangerous chance the Deeks will be very happy that that's the effort that they faced fortuitous bounce there to pull back after small tried to get through that defense not going to try to turn on Harrison. Christine Johnson thought about it, but uh, 
Sad to save some of that endurance and not chase after a ball that was destined to go out of bounds. Under 20 minutes. Ike now calling for it. She's pushed up that midfield spot and attacking. Coach Ratcliffe is saying, all right, I'm going to go rely on my veterans to try to tie this up or steal three points. As well, she knew exactly that the attacker was on nipping at the heels. And as soon as she felt that contact went down, that was a brilliant play. Yeah, that's smart. And to know where you are in the field, it was a foul, but there's an art to winning fouls in the right positions when you're hemmed in like that, facing your own goal, pressure from the opposition forward, good spot to win a foul. Jung with a nice turn. This is moved up. Ike, Ike, hoping to play this up to Guama. Keep it down here in this final third for the Cardinal as they will have a throw in. The second half, the second half fouls, five nil Stanford in the foul department. Left foot swing across. Another great delivery, too. I mean, it is surgical with these balls played in, where they're trying to go with that target. That one down. Stanford looking at 16 and a half minutes remaining in this one. Down one goal. Hoping that they could get this very disciplined back line. Fall asleep just once. Corner kicks. Another impressive stat. Wake Forest has held Stanford just to two corners. Another good ball. Played off the bar. I, that ball was played again perfectly. That's uh, Buta. Great defending goalkeeping by Amaral. Look at this curling banana style. And then off the back board. That was very nearly spectacular. Really good goalkeeping because that's really difficult for a goalkeeper when the ball is going over your head like that. You know, you put a player at the near post to keep the corner taker from fizzing it in, but there is very little defense for a an Olympico right. that is top corner. And that's really good goalkeeper. Murphy, oh, clever to Colt. Colt in the center in that scene. Was hoping to continue moving to that final third. Chavoshi trying to keep her footing. Plays it to her right, to Small, Small. Hugged up against the touchline, goes out of bounds. Stanford now looking under 15 minutes. The Deacons have no plans of pulling a low block. Parking the bus. Coach Deleuze said that he trusted this team. He just kept with it. I mean, he, some of those results that he had in the early part of the season that may have some people scratching their heads, but he trusted this team. He loves this team. And finally, the fruits of the labor showed up. Definitely thought he should have got a point, at least a point against Carolina. I mean, allowing UNC only three shots, that's unheard of. 
Yeah, and they're going to have to bear down now because with about 14 minutes left in the game, Stanford's starting to turn the screw. You see them starting to regain superiority over this match, and it's really only fouls like that which are relieving the pressure right now for the, for the Deeks. So it is crunch time for sure for the hosts and for Stanford. The time is now to capitalize on this increasing momentum. Standing up, they have not sat down at all. They've been up, and so has Stanford. So how intense this matchup has been since the first whistle. As Abby Colton plays it to her sister, Emily Colton. Clever, small, played it on the ground, maybe pinpointing that uh, penalty ball. Dempsey Brown with a great intervention. Here's Emily Colton. Towing inside the 18. Now she's outside working and trying to find enough space to put the delivery. Small keeps it in play. Yeah! Goes straight to that byline and waits for that angle to shut down and then plays it off the Stanford defender for a corner. Again, showing the IQ. Clock stopped at 12 11. He's trying to get a ball to get over there on that uh, far flag. Last couple quarter deliveries have been a little too floating. It gives the defense time to sort it out. Need a little more fizz behind this ball. That's when the Deeks have been most dangerous from set pieces. Murphy is poaching. There it is. Far stick. She checks her surroundings. It's right back on it. This is what creates a lot of problems. Small poking it. Hank. Hank's inside. A blast that just ducked away. Brilliant goalkeeping out pallet Haley Gray. Again, the tight angle shot from that right-hand side comes so close to bearing fruit for the Deeks, but a spectacular save by Haley Craig. Another fantastic, brilliant goalkeeper. Look at this hit on the volley. Cardinal. First time, great save. Five saves for her. She finally, you know, took her time, paid her dues, and now is the starting keeper. I mean, we're not surprised. It's Stanford. Very historic program. What uh, Ratcliffe has put together. Colton. Trying to curl that one, punched away by Craig. I think she maybe was looking for some help there, but decided to punch it away rather than snatch it. And Hanks has this one taken away. Now moving is Guaba. Into the center is the dangerous Ike. Junk. Jung, left foot, this deflected. It is not, not, not deflected, so it'll be a go kick. Yeah, it looked like it at first, but just a misfire. Stanford just has not been able to put it together in the attacking third. Morris comes in for small. Small, such a dangerous player. But the luxury, though, for Coach to lose to bring out a player like that, bring in someone like Emily Morris. I'm not sure if you're thinking more defensively, the def defense-minded here, Kyle, but Small goes out. She's huge on the attack for Wake Forest, just yeah. adding, buying some time. Yeah, she's been a spark plug for this Wake Forest team off the bench. Coach to lose, animated.
tilt with that chip on his shoulder from no NCAA appearance last season. Oh, Murphy, take out the magician hat. Just went one rotation <laughs> over the byline, but man, Murphy. That was, that was spectacular. <laughs> Unbelievable. Just waited and waited and waited for the defender to commit, knowing that Stanford has got to win the ball back. She was happy to just stand there, and as soon as the defender committed, she made her move. That was fantastic. That was also brilliant work by Bravo, using her body to make that turn. Look at the tackle by Christine Johnson. That too. If she misfires there, it's at least a yellow card. Wamba's hold-up play, impressive. What up ended there. Murphy. Speaking of hold-up play. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, that's, that's her forte. You know, she can hold the ball up, allow the wingers to get into the attack. But not only that, she can go up. She can move in. She can hit it from 20 yards up. Represented the, the Republic of Ireland. Came over from UNC. A little wasting of time here, but how about that? Called up to play for the Republic of Ireland. Yeah, multiple times. It shows that she's clearly impressed people in that national team camp. And I think she's shown tonight why she's so valuable. You know, she may not put up goals and assist numbers, but she brings something to this team that is exceptionally rare. What a diving stop on a possible ball played right in front of the goal mouth. I'm just still just stunned by the delivery. The Balls played from the wings by Stanford. They have, I, for Wake Forest, they are very lucky to keep it in one nil lead, but those balls are placed on a postage stamp. And now Wake Forest, maybe the strategy there is to play it to the flag and Try to eat up some clock. Only a goal in the first half by Emily Cole, former Tar Heel, now Demon Deacon. Is the only difference in this matchup between number 13 and number one. And the Deacons hoping that goal is enough to make history upset the number one team in the country, first time ever in the history of the program. Murphy swimming into the 18, got tripped up. The official has no problem with it. So nope. let's play on. And Emily Murphy had already seen the ball leave her feet by the time she went to ground, so. That was the right call by the referee. And Ty, what's been most impressive about this game so far, which has lots of time left for anything to happen, the Deeks have not backed down from their way of playing the entire way through. Not from the opening whistle when they were playing against the number one team in the country, and not after going in front 1-0 when they could have sat back and tried to protect the, the advantage, and not in the final 20 minutes when they could have said, all right, you know, let's not risk conceding another goal to go ahead and attack. The entire uh, 85 minutes, 84 minutes so far, they have played Wake Forest soccer. And to me, that is the most impressive thing about this performance so far. But they have got to hunker down because they're going to see over the next five and a half minutes the number one team in the country throw it all forward for an equalizer. Kossmeyer is in number 33. 
Stanford has won 44 in the last 45 matches. How do you go perfect and then you go the only losses to Florida State? That's just got to stink, you know. This is... <laughs> but you know what, Kyle? I mean, Stanford, who lost, they lost some players, but you bring in the number three team in the country, you still have great pieces back. I mean, it's it's no no question mark why they were preseason ranked two and why they're number one. I mean, this is a stout team from top to bottom to make the cross-country trip, too, but... Uh, you know, adding a Stanford team to ACC, it's just a flex of this one. Yeah. <laughs> and Ty Auburn regained the lead over Vanderbilt. So their perfect record is at least back in, in line at this point. Stanford though, not so much. The dying embers of this match with about four and some change remaining. And the Deacons holding on to a one nil lead Stanford with the clock against them. Hoping to come up with an equalizer. A big theft possession to Wake Forest by Dixie Brown. And then the play to the flag just to eat some clock up. Cool. Excuse me, Morris was yelling at the side judge about something. Three thirty. Stanford again moving to the final third. Wake Forest keeping their shape. Keeping their lead, at least for now. A little too heavy and no problems for Amaral. You see the idea, you want that one to sit right there at the 12 and then have possibly your new sub come in, Cosmere. But Amaral was not scared at all to come off her line and claim it. And the Deeks. See the clock ticking, about 2.45 remaining. No intent to create an attack here in the final third. They do have California on Sunday. A little Northern California part of their schedule. As Nikki Small comes in. Yeah, Emily Murphy left everything out on the field tied tonight for Wake Forest. She is exhausted, and rightly so. Her hold-up play was spectacular. The combination play in the final third, she had everything working and has been absolutely critical to this performance tonight. You saw it on the goal where she shielded her defender to create the space for the shot. It's just her soccer IQ is off the charts. If it was a, this was a FIFA game, you would see awareness, 99. <laughs> well done, well done. And by the way, that comes out soon. Oh yeah? Oh, no. Well, EAFC. Right. But uh, yeah, Murphy, as soon as she walked on campus, things changed, the leadership. I mean, coach to lose. He was lost for words once. We were be asking him about her last season, just to, the leadership. And even when she couldn't play or she was injured or trying to get some rest because of her busy summer, very vocal on the bench to get her team motivated. And yeah, we just saw it there on, on screen as, you know, she's basically, the last two minutes of this game, she's a coach. She's hands on her knees on the touchline and, and yelling out instructions. Morris again sends this one down, headed towards the corner flag, but off the line is Healy Craig. 90 seconds remaining. 90 seconds. 
to an historic score line for this program. Whew. What a shot, though. What a good look by Cosmayer. Lofting that one, it just went wide, but right idea. Probably not the space you would allow someone. No, but it's also you, you will take that shot if you're Wade Forrest because she had about five more yards to push forward to get closer to goal before taking that shot. I don't think she realized how much space she had. The fans standing on their feet. Urging and willing, pushing this Wake Forest team to the finish line with 33 seconds remaining. Coach DeLuise has reached many milestones in his career. He is pretty much the architect of women's soccer here at Wake Forest. But to put a feather in his cap, He'd love to knock off the number one team, and he's nine seconds away from putting that on his resume. That ball will roll out and let the celebration begin. Wake Forest in five days has knocked off number two and now number one, the first time ever in school history. Congratulations, Wake Forest, Stephen Deacons, and head coach Tony Deleuze. They have definitely.